Good morning and welcome to the College of Southern Maryland's regional Hughesville campus. Today is a really important day and it's so nice to see so many of our friends and partners here. This marks the groundbreaking of our new Center for Health Sciences building at this campus. And it's truly a groundbreaking event. For 60 years, the College of Southern Maryland has played a significant role in educating and training the future workforce. We've offered practical nursing training since 1975, and this year, 2019, marks the 40th anniversary of the college's associate degree in nursing program. We look forward to continuing our strong tradition, and we, we really, really value our role in training healthcare workers at this college. This, the Center for Health Sciences, which will be central in location, is expected to be, to be completed in March of 2021. It's going to be about 50,000 square feet designed to lead standards, and it will feature specialized health laboratories for CSM's programs in nursing, emergency medical services, rehabilitation, wellness and fitness, massage therapy, pharmacy technician, medical assisting, health information management, medical coding, and medical laboratory technology. It's also going to be the signature building of this campus. If you've had an opportunity to see the pictures of what it will be around here, and better yet, the video that shows you what it's going to look like on the inside, you'll see that this really is an extraordinary building. With this new center, we're going to be able to really serve our region's healthcare partners because our students come to us in fact, they count on us to help them become the healthcare professionals that we need in Southern Maryland. With this center, we will provide better access to those programs to the residents of all three counties. And this is consistent with our goals at the College of Southern Maryland to serve the region's needs. As we educate future healthcare professionals through our exemplary academic programs and collaborative community partnerships, our health sciences faculty who are here in droves strive to foster lifelong learning, competence, and integrity. There's, little, there's few professions that are more noble than healthcare. And people take that very seriously. And I've always been in awe of our healthcare faculty and our students. And indeed, as a patient, I see the fruits of our labors and it's it's an amazing experience to get the kind of care, and I know that it comes from the good work, the nurturing, and the rigorous standards that our faculty hold our students to, and I thank you. We're delighted to have everybody here join us, and I'd like to recognize some of our guests. Um, we have Scott Travers from Senator Van Hollen's office. Alumna Stephanie Carey from Congressman Hoyer's office. Gretchen Hardman from Governor Hogan's office. Rachel Jones from Senator Cardin's office. We have Senator Bailey. I just saw you walk in. Enoch Bevel from Senator Ellis's office. <laughs> Delegate Edith Patterson. <laughs> Delegate C.T. Wilson. <laughs> James Fielder, Secretary for the Maryland Higher Education Commission. <laughs> Commissioner President Tim Hutchins. Edola. <laughs> Commissioner President Reuben Collins. <laughs> Commissioner Gilbert Bowling and alumnus. <laughs> Commissioner Thomasina Coates and alumnus. <laughs> Mark Belton, Charles County Administrator. There you are. <laughs> Charles County Superintendent of Schools, Kim Hill. From St. Mary's County, Commissioner President Randy Guy. <laughs> Commissioner Mike Hewitt. <laughs> Commissioner John O'Connor. 
and from our partner hospitals. I'm really delighted to have the president of Calvert Health, Dean Teague, <laughs> accompanied by his chief nursing officer, Diane Couchman, <laughs> the president of MedStar St. Mary's Hospital, Christine Ray, The VP Chief Nursing Officer, MedStar St. Mary's and 1996 CSM alum, Don Utrakis. <laughs> and we have so many other folks here, and I really want to give a special shout out to our Board of Trustees members who are here. We have our Chair of the Board of Trustees, Ted Harwood. <laughs> Vice Chair, Jay Webster. Mr. Sean Coates, Sonia Cox, Margaret Dunkel, Lois DiNatale, Dr. John Roach, Trustee Emerita Mary Krug, accompanied by Warren Krug, Trustee Emeritus Jamie Raley. <laughs> Fans, it's great. <laughs> Trustee of Merit Dorothea Smith. <laughs> and from our foundation board of directors, we have we have Karen Elder, Dr. Steve Peters, Trey Proctor, Greg Cockerham, Director Emeritus. Jay Lilly, Director Emeritus. And on my team, we have a lot of folks. We have Dr. Eileen Abel, Vice President of Academic Affairs. Dr. Bill Comey, our Chief Operations Officer. Michelle Goodwin, Advocacy, Advocacy and Community Engagement. Dr. Tracy Harris, Student Equity and Success. Ellen Flowers Fields, Continuing Education and Workforce Development. And I believe I saw our general counsel, Craig Patton, I'll just walk in here in the back. <laughs> so I just want to thank everyone for being here, and I want to thank all of the rest of our partners for being here. This is, this is terrific. I know I left somebody out, and for that I already apologize. So th this building is phase two of the development of this campus. And it's part of the vision set by the Board of Trustees before I got here. And there, I heard some stories early on about what it took to really craft this vision, secure this piece of property, and really develop what's going to be here. And one of the people who was in on the early days of this is our chair, Mr. Ted Harwood, who has served on the board since 2010. At this time, I'd like to bring him forward to the podium. Before I get started, I want to make sure that everybody understands the Board of Trustees has been fully behind this from day one, starting with Jamie Raley several, several years ago. And having three of our previous board chairs here is so important to us. And we have all of our uh, trustees except one here as well. So it's, it's, a, it's an order that we've been given by the county and the, com uh, the community that uh, we need to have a regional campus and it's taken several years for that to turn into a concrete, uh, this building basically. And again, thank you for everybody that's been out here, foundation board as well. A lot of uh, alumni have been here for many, many years. This is my last year and I, I'm, I'm gonna be sad to see it go. All right, thank you, Dr. Murphy. <laughs> Back to the script. <laughs> It's incredible to see the growth in the building in this space that is now the region of the Hughesville campus in such a short amount of time. It was five years ago in the spring of 2014 when the Board of Trustees moved forward with the purchase of this beautiful piece of property. We looked for it for several years prior to that. For the ideal location for the college's fourth campus as the regional campus. We envi envisioned these 74 acres as a place to efficiently and effectively serve the residents of Southern Maryland for many decades beyond what the College of Southern Maryland represents today. Today we're celebrating moving forward with the master plan 
The master plan designed by Grimm and Parker Architects for this new and centralized campus is designed to create a sense of community. The first phase, the Center of Trades and Energy Training, is where we sit today, has proven our vision. It's so much more accessible for all the students across our region. As we move into this second phase, the flagship building of the Center for Health Sciences has been described by the architects as a forward-thinking, flexible science building. If you watched uh, on the way in the video monitors, we had a, uh, um, it, it's a uh, uh, video out there that some think you might get uh, vertigo watching it, but it, it was a pretty good vid video. And it does show what we're trying to accomplish. But I couldn't agree more. I think you too will agree, and if you haven't seen the virtual tour that's showing it, that I just talked about, uh, step up and there's uh, several monitors, you can watch it there. The trustees are looking forward to providing Southern Maryland and Washington area employees with a healthcare workforce which possesses the skills and the attributes to meet the employer's needs and to continue working with our partners to address the healthcare demands for the new jobs in the community, in the, in the economy, and in the future. Dr. Barry. We couldn't do this without um, an incredible amount of support from the state of Maryland and our counties. Because CSM is a regional college, construction funding for this facility is split between the state, which carries 75% of the cost, and Charles County, thank you very much, which carries 25%. Joining us this morning to bring greetings from our state and county partners um, are many, many folks, and I'm just going to turn the podium over to those folks in the order that's in your program so that they can bring greetings. We are so grateful to have them and we're going to kick this off this morning with Dr. James Fielder, the Secretary for the Maryland Commission for Higher Education. Good morning. What a tremendous day. And the first thing is to say is we need a round of applause for all the staff that have worked so hard for five years to make this come through fruition. And the first year for Governor Hogan, I served as appointment secretary. That was a critical time when we were appointing 1,700 people throughout the state on many different boards. And it's just so overwhelmingly positive the morning, this morning to see so many trustees, so many people who've been involved with this campus for so long and have had the vision to make it come to fruition. And that's what it takes. If you think about it for a couple of minutes, and I'll go a little bit off script, but Dr. President, two years here now? I'm in my third. Oh, third, third. starting, <laughs> correct me, third year. <laughs> she embodies what I consider the, the twin sisters of leadership, optimism. I bet in any meeting, any time I've had a meeting with her or any of her staff, there's not a problem that doesn't have a solution. It's, well, I understand that, you know, we didn't have the soil test, but we can do that. Well, what about the septic? Well, what about the well? Well, we can do that. What about this? And all those things are speed bumps along the way. That optimism creates the twin sister of inspiration. Without the inspiration of every one of you in this room, you would, this building wouldn't be here yet. The next one wouldn't be delivered March 2021. So congratulations on that. Now for a minute. Um, Governor Hogan has been so strong in support of higher education throughout the state. Literally billions of dollars has been spent in the last five years for capital and operating, and that's gonna continue. So the theme of increased student success with less debt is embodied here also. The Promise Program, and the doctor and I were just talking about this, this year was um, appropriated $15 million. We're now at about 1,278 students have, have taken part in this. And that's going to continue to grow as, as the word spreads. The Promise program is designed as a last dollar, so any student that qualifies with a 2.3 GPA in high school can go to a community college, a public community college, at no cost. So the tuitions will be paid for. They have to spend the rest of the money first. So if you get a student who's very low income and they don't qualify for the promise is because they have Pell money. The Pell money pays for the tuition base. 
And then if, if you've got a, a family with an income, I can go through those numbers, but I won't. It's really in the weeds. Uh, <laughs> but the bottom line is each year we deal with 150,000 applicants and award $136 million through our programs at the department. The governor has been pushing this extremely hard because he understands that every investment that we make in our future through the students is improving our economy. It's improving our community. It's evidenced by the people here. Each of you has created your own legacy by being part of this. It's a positive step forward. And that's what's needed for workforce. Uh, workforce development is part of economic development. And the base of that is education. You've got to have a willing and educated workforce. Because the next steps to start talking about, well, technology. Well, do you have broadband? Do you have access? Do you have the workers? Do the workers have the education? Do they have, you know, it keeps going on and on. And just like when you're saying, okay, we're gonna make a plan to build a building, you have to have the vision and you have to have the inventory of what are your assets and where you're gonna go. And it's the same way with the workforce and with your student body. To know that you have six simulation rooms coming up, so you're gonna be able to see a mannequin give birth. You, you're gonna be able to see the, the students, the students dealing with a, man, a mannequin that will moan when they do something wrong. I mean, it's unbelievable stuff. I've seen it at other institutions. It's just fantastic the way this is moving. So with that, I just really wanna congratulate you. It's my fourth trip down here. I just absolutely love this place. Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. Um, my name is C.T. Wilson. I am the chair of the Southern Maryland delegation. And uh, first of all, I just want to say on behalf of the Southern Maryland de delegation, thank you and congratulations to everyone who put their hands on this. Um, for those of y'all that know me, some of y'all might not, but um, these are usually not my favorite things to do. I hate kissing babies and shaking hands, cutting ribbons. <laughs> you know, I always say when I ran for office, if you don't like politicians, vote for me. If you like politics, I'm not your man. But this is important to come here today. Because, see, I grew up in foster care, and one of the things I was always sold was this line, you need your four-year degree. And then when you get that, they're like, no, no, that's not enough. You need another master's. And when you get that, like, no, no, you need a doctorate. So after nine years and $150,000 worth of debt, I realized I'm still looking for a job. <laughs> so it's really good to see because I talk to these kids every day. Some of them are struggling in school. And to know that, well, four-year degree is not the silver bullet getting something under your feet, immediately becoming self-sufficient, which places like this allow. That's why I had to come, because I'm so excited because a lot of the children that I work with depend on facilities like this to get to that next step in life, to get off of the system, start their own families, and become independent. And so for that, I'm very grateful. But secondly, I came because, um, as we all know, political infighting is inimical to the success uh, and development of a community. But this is a shining example of what we can do together. Because we are a very diverse community, Southern Maryland. But see, this is Republicans and Democrats. And I want you to take this home with you because it's important. Because when you watch the press, you would not know that we can be in a room without trying to punch each other. <laughs> you wouldn't know that we can work together to do something greater because that's not what's sexy, so that's not what's being sold, so that will never be front page news. But at the end of the day, we can. This is an example. And I find this so important because every day I wake up, I'm more and more disappointed from what I hear from both sides of the fence. Everybody's bullying, but we don't have to. We can be greater, we are being greater by doing stuff like this, and it's very important. This is a good day for Southern Maryland, but it's a great day to be a Southern Marylander. I'm very proud. Lastly, um, it's gonna look like I'm sneaking out when I'm done, it's because I am. <laughs> this is a part-time job, I still have a family to feed, I'm getting ready to go do that. The judge has held me harmless, but I got to go. But I wanted to make sure that I got here today because this is very important for all of us. But in my heart, giving kids who may not be stars, straight A students in high school, an opportunity to succeed and become great. Thank you very much. Good morning, all. I'm Edith Patterson. I serve as chair of the Charles County delegation and it is certainly indeed my pleasure to bring greetings on behalf of your delegation. The delegation that includes Senators Mike Miller, 
Uh, for Ellis and delegates uh, Deborah Davis, Susie Proctor, and the exiting C.T. Wilson. <laughs> He really has a, he has to go back to court. Please know we are totally committed to the College of Southern Maryland and the pivotal role uh, you continue to play in addressing the educational and technological uh, needs of our residents and businesses. Um, when I say you, I still feel like I'm part of this team because I spent so much of my life here uh, at the College of Southern Maryland. Uh, this is very evident by the ribbon-cutting ceremony for the Center for Health Sciences we will participate in later today. Nursing and allied health programs address the preparedness and the care needs of our population's increasing uh, demand for highly able and committed health professionals. Attend any graduation, and those of you who've attended know what I'm going to say. Winter or spring, and you will visually witness the number of health professionals, the graduates, who have purposefully chosen this college. They are spirited. They, first of all, they're smart. They've been selected, and they are ready to take on the world. Uh, on a personal note, my daughter-in-law, Tierra Butler Patterson, was a graduate of the College of Southern Maryland. She has progressed and has earned two degrees, master's degrees, as a result of her interest in pro progressing to the next level. But her base is the College of Southern Maryland. A college department, this college department, uh, the health sciences, has an impeccable record for student passage of certifying board scores. And that's why so many of them want to come here, not only from the US, but throughout the world, as you will note at graduation. The program, this program has uh, quality professor, professors and internships and clinical opportunities. Fortunately for me, I am not an observer of this institutional health programs for three decades. 30 plus years, I was an active member of the CSM team and noted the popularity of the first, going back in history, the first LPN program where Peg DeStefanis and Ann Smith were the leaders and the years henceforth growth and responsiveness to Southern Maryland. With the implementation of transfer agreements and articulation of four-year institutions, you CSM have forged ahead with futuristic plans for counties around here, for the nation, and Dr. Murphy for the world. <laughs> we are also, seriously, because when you talk to some of the students, they are not just staying here in the US, they're going back to their homelands after earning their credentials here. We are also aware of the costs as delegates um, with nursing and allied health and will work to extend advanced educational uh, nursing grants through M MHEC to support clinical nursing specialist programs and the Hal and Joe Conan, Cohen rather, uh, graduate nursing facilities scholarship. And again, applaud MHEC for what they are doing for these grants. Thank you. Again, congratulations on behalf of your Charles County delegation. We look forward to our return in two years for your ribbon cutting. Thank you. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. How, how's everybody? I welcome you and thank you for inviting me to speak today as we celebrate the groundbreaking of the College of Southern Maryland Center for Health Services. The Board of Commissioners of Charles County continues to focus on achieving goals and our objectives with an emphasis on public education, quality of life, economic development, the environment, good governance, all of which impacts future generations. We continue to take steps to ensure that Charles County 
has quality education so that our public schools educate and prepare students for careers and life after they graduate. CSM has been an economic catalyst for the county for over 60 years by being an important link between public education and the workforce and preparing our younger generations for the jobs of today and for tomorrow. As our population continues to grow, the needs persist for skilled healthcare professionals. CSM works to meet this persistent demand and has many accomplishments to be proud of. Some recent accomplishments relating to healthcare education include the Medical Lab Tech Program, achieving the highest national accreditation award, <laughs> students being awarded prestigious recognition by the Maryland Nurses Association, The Center of Health Sciences will further this work by supporting the healthcare workforce. The new center, which follows the opening of the Center of Trades and Energy Training at the Hughesville campus, provides a centralized location for students pursuing health sciences programs. CSM provides students a pathway for success through its advancing facilities and many transfer agreements with partnering institutions which further promotes continued education. By continuing to offer educational opportunities for our future generations, the College of Southern Maryland is investing in the future of our community and greatly contributes to the success of Charles County and Southern Maryland. We thank you for your efforts and look forward to seeing the success stories that this facility will foster and inspire. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you all for being here today. I can't find my place here. I don't need too much anyway. Uh, it's, I'm grateful that uh, this campus is being built. Uh, number one, I learned at MACO just recently, it's the Maryland Association of Counties, we had a meeting, and there were several counties right across the bridge, like Queen Anne County, that area, that do not have any such thing as this. And they were amazed at what we're doing over here. And even at the high school level, at Leonardtown High School, we have our own campus right there for technical training, the Forest Center. This is a stepping stone, not only to a four-year degree, but also a stepping stone for those who really don't need that four-year degree to go on especially in the health sciences area, LPN, et cetera, et cetera, and that medical field for training. We need that here. This is, this is great, a great venue right here. And uh, my wife is alumni of CSM. She went on and got University of Maryland, summa cum laude, two master's degree. She just got drafted to be the uh, uh, business manager of the new Defense Space Agency. So it shows you how far you can go, starting right here. I'm very proud of her, and uh, I'm, I'm proud of my own self as continuing on, but unfortunately, I didn't go to four years of college. I got drafted in the military out of high school. <laughs> well, I spent 26 years in the Air Force and ended up my career in the Pentagon. <laughs> so I'm grateful for all this. This is, this is tremendous. When you talk to other counties, I mean, my eyes have been opened up by what we what successfully we have done here. And this tri-county location here, I'm, I'm glad that Charles County beat us out. It was, we, we, we actually tried to get it in, uh, Charlotte Hall, but they, they said they need to revitalize this area, so we let them have it. <laughs> Just a little history, you didn't know about that. So. <laughs> but under the leadership now, Dr. Murphy, she has, she has brought us a long ways, this, this campus here. And Mr. Harney, of course, he's done a good job. He says his last year, but we'll continue letting him stay on, okay? Don't, don't let him go, don't let him go. He's done a great job. And Mr. Dr. Murphy, please come forward here. We have a proclamation I'd like to give you is from our county. And as I read this, uh, it, sort of, it sort of sums it all up. Whereas the College of Southern Maryland shapes the local economy by educating our future workforce, helping students succeed and attain their career goals, transfer opportunities for students after they complete their associate degrees, such as dual degree programs and ASN, BSN opportunities, create a clear health pathway. And whereas since 1979, the college's associate degree is in nursing, 
program has been one of Southern Maryland's primary providers of quality healthcare training. Dedicated facilities, successful graduates, and the application of the latest technology have been on the route of the department's 40 years of success. And whereas the regional Hughesville campus provides a central location for specialized offerings and programs for the College of Southern Maryland to serve its students, and with this second phase of the campus, the Center for Health Services, or Health Sciences, specialized programs in nursing and allied health while providing training and education for the healthcare professionals of, for the future, including our residents of St. Mary's County, Calvert, and Charles Counties. Now, therefore, we, the Commissioner of St. Mary's County, do hereby celebrate the groundbreaking of the Center for Health Sciences and are proud to say that the efforts of everyone involved in this project exemplify our commitment as a team to remain proactive in furthering the health of our citizens. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, especially those uh, future students of this new educational enterprise targeting the needs for healthcare sciences and skills here at the College of Southern Maryland. It's good to come back home to my adopted county, uh, even though I represent my finally got back home to my home county after being gone for 50 some years from there. Uh, this is my last crusade over there, so that's why I came back. <laughs> I can guarantee you. Local government is much different than anything else I did, with the exception of being in villages in South Vietnam. <laughs> there are some parallels at times, believe me, right? <laughs> and I went back to Vietnam two years ago. It is fabulous. In the end, we succeeded at our objectives, and they will be a worldwide power on the Pacific Rim and a great partner for us in the future. I'm confirmed to that. But that made it worthwhile. CSM's new health science building at its Hughesville, Hughesville campus is strategically located to serve the area. The Hughesville campus has established itself in the hub of Southern Maryland, and it's a great location for continued advancement and providing critical skill development for the entire region. CSM remains key in supporting high school graduates and those who are looking for change through broadening their skills and insight and future opportunities and societal needs. Recent studies show Maryland has an aging population, and Calvert County, for example, is a subset of that trend. Over the next decade, approximately 25% of our population will be over 65 years of age. There will be an increasing need for health care support and exploring the scientific elements of future health care and the delivery of that care. This new capability at CSM will be a tremendous asset to the region in supporting this particular population. As well as supporting the population of those, and I frequently talk about that, of those from 18 to 44 years old. That cohort we have got to bring into a better economical revenue generating position so when they get to their prime years of 45 to 65, they're producing the revenue that this current generation has produced. CSM will play a key role in helping that cohort move, even from the beginning at the 18-year-old mark or from the returning somewhere in the latter years of 30 or 40 to come back to a new career, a new area. Almost two decades ago, it was a special honor for me to be the first graduate of Charles County Community College to return and deliver the keynote graduation address in January of 2000. This also marked a new phase at CSM as it was the first winter commencement exercise and the last class of the 20th century or the first class of the 21st century, depending on how you approach it and what calendar you happen to use at that particular time. My remarks that evening, I recall speaking directly to the graduates' future successes to a specific duty of the academic society that they were about to join. And that duty is to humankind. I challenge them to speak highly of your journey at CSM, which was a new name and brand of the previous collection of college campuses throughout Southern Maryland under Charles County Community College. And I happened to be in the House of Delegates at that point when that was adopted, and that was a real pleasure to be able to help with that adoption of a, a more broader name and brand that applied to all the region. I encouraged the graduates that night to reflect back on their college journey, 
when they reach the pinnacle of their life support, life success, to find a way to give back to the college and help current students to have a great learning experience through such means as individual financial support or mentoring as they venture onward in life or by giving direct to the support of the college itself and their fundraising endeavors. I have done those things. In my life careers of being a soldier and a trooper, I decided to give back in my own way to those military personnel who were returning from foreign places and active duty and seeking new careers in law enforcement or public safety. I encourage my colleagues, as you speak to your constituencies, let them know government cannot do everything. People have to step up to the plate individually and take others under their wing and help encourage them and mentor them and support them financially along. We all have seen the data on the cost of college education and the impact it has on those when they finish that education as to how long it takes them to return to be able to find that, figure out that debt and pay that back. Thus, we celebrate today another new addition to CSM's educational acumen, which continues to strengthen the entire region economically and provides our population with a world-class college. For over 60 years, CSM has met the needs enhancing educational opportunity for those who otherwise may not have had the ability to accomplish that particular step in creating their own heritage. Consequently, CSM is a part of the Southern Maryland heritage that we have and a key component here in the region. Congratulations, President Murphy, staff, and students. Best wishes as you adjust course and another milestone in academic leadership and excellence as you create this new institution or element of institution to the overall CSM. Congratulations and have a great celebration when that final day comes. And I, I just want to take a moment and really thank our elected officials and appointed officials for the support for our students. I think it's important in this day when we see rising cost of higher education and we hear about the student loan crisis to know that really that is not the case for students who come to the College of Southern Maryland. Thank you for the promised scholarships. Secretary Fielder, thank Governor Hogan for those promised scholarships. Thank everybody in the legislature for voting for those. We have 175 individuals who will be able to come to the College of Southern Maryland and have all of their needs met due to this scholarship program. I think that's pretty astonishing. But the support of our elected officials in things like this that are high demand really matters because it enables us to keep our costs low for our students. Our foundation directors really do a yeoman's job in raising funds for scholarships. I see that Dixie Miller has joined us among. It's a wonderful team that has really developed a strategic plan that aligns with the college's strategic plan. We are committed to keeping education accessible, affordable, and high quality in Southern Maryland because we know that it really matters for the people who live here. 80% of our graduates stay here, work here, generate that revenue you mentioned, and make that contribution. They raise their families here and they keep us going. So yes, I see us as not just part of the workforce development, but I see us as a vital part of the economic engine of Southern Maryland. And I'm really proud with, to be here with my team to be able to work for such a noble goal. And right now I'm going to introduce one of our really ex exceptional team members who went out of her comfort zone with this project. And generally in academic affairs school, they don't teach you about facilities, programming, and management. I mean, blessedly she was cited by Tony Jernigan and Bill Comey, but Dr. Eileen Abel, took this venture on with very little sense of what to do. But the result is just extraordinary. 
It really is. If you've had an opportunity to see what is out there on those videos and to see what's coming, it, it really is, it's amazing. It really is amazing. And it, and it is the result of the hard work of a lot of folks. So to brag about what we do and to talk about our exemplary programs and where we're going, I am now going to turn the podium over to Dr. Eileen Abel, Vice President for Academic Affairs. So I'm going to go a little bit off script, too, just for a minute. Um, as Dr. Murphy mentioned, I was completely out of my comfort zone. So as I walk in in uh, 2015, and Dr., the previous president, Dr. Gottfried, says, oh, yeah, well, we're building this building, and you're going to be the campus shepherd. I went, did anybody tell you you have a PhD in Victorian English? <laughs> <laughs> um, but it, it really has been an adventure. Um, but before I actually get started on my formal remarks, I want to acknowledge the team over the last year as we were doing the design that has really made this an extraordinary experience. Um, Dr. Polk's visionary leadership for the Health Sciences Division. I'm um, going to talk about her more in just a minute, but I just want to say, Laura, you are awesome. <laughs> David Oakes, I saw you from Grimman Parker Architecture, thank you. And Hunter Dias from the HOK Lab. Um, the design efforts were made much easier with your efforts, and we appreciate the. Um, the, the Fab Four, as we called ourselves for, for, for a year. So, as you've heard the remarks today, you know that the need for health science degrees remains critical nationwide. The U.S. will need to hire 2.3 million new healthcare workers by 2025 in order to adequately take care of its aging population. According to recent research, a persistent shortage of skilled health care workers translates into hundreds of thousands of positions that remain unfilled every year. In the southern Maryland region alone, demand for health care occupations will grow at least 25 percent over the next seven years. Too often, people consider just doctors and nurses when it comes to their care but many other healthcare professionals help in ensuring proper diagnosis and executing appropriate treatment. Today's patients are treated by a healthcare team, a team built on the academic pillars of excellence, found and taught here at the College of Southern Maryland. And I would like to take a, a moment here to acknowledge my extraordinary faculty who teach in these fabulous and high achieving healthcare programs. Can I ask you all please to stand? So encompassing credit degree programs like nursing, emergency medical services, rehabilitation, wellness and fitness, massage therapy, pharmacy tech, medical assisting, health information management, medical coding, and medical lab technology, as well as work so workforce certificates in a variety of specialties like phlebotomy, CNA, GNA, and ECG, EKG technicians, the Health Pathway Programs at the College of Southern Maryland offer an extensive choice of medical program options for a number of different careers, with training ranging from a few months to two years. It is to meet this workforce need, and specifically for the students of Southern Maryland who will meet this healthcare demand, that this facility has been conceived and designed and now finally to be built. The Center for Health Sciences, when completed, will be approximately 50,000 square feet and designed to LEED standards. It will feature specialized health sciences labs, a clinical simulation, yes, we can watch babies being born, well, by mannequins anyway, um, <laughs> classrooms, computer labs, collaborative learning spaces, that was a key feature that Dr. Polk insisted that we build in, beautiful health sciences faculty and staff offices, a student success suite, because we know active and collaborative learning is learning of the future. A large multi-purpose meeting room. This type of forward-thinking facility does not come without a lot of back-end mindfulness and coordination. And again, I just want to take a point of privilege to acknowledge especially the CSM Health Sciences Division Chair, Dr. Laura Polk. Through her work and in coordination with Grimman Parker Architecture, HOK Labs, faculty in health sciences, and our very important advisory boards all being involved in the design process. This Center for Health Sciences will be a state-of-the-art facility and our signature building here 
in the Hugh regional Hughesville campus. These efforts and dedication are creating a space that will ensure an outstanding outcome for our students who are tomorrow's caregivers and health professionals. I also just want to give a shout out to Dr. Bill Comey, to whom I have passed the, um, the building torch for this. So <laughs> I am not unhappy about that. <laughs> So, um, although Dr. Vinod Shah is noted next in your program to join us, he has unfortunately been called away on urgent business and is unable um, to come this morning. The college is especially grateful to the foundation director, Dr. Isla Shah, and her husband, Dr. Vinod Shah, for their generous support of CSM and their commitment to student success with their recent $100,000 gift to the college. This gift will support the College of Southern Maryland Nursing and Health Alliance Scholarship which the Shaws established in 2016 in support of our health sciences program. On behalf of our students, we offer our sincerest gratitude to the Shaws who weave their amazing generosity throughout this region. As many of us have mentioned, the college shapes the local economy by shaping future workforce. We help our students succeed and attain their career goals, whether it's through credit degree programs or through our continuing education workforce training certificates. The value of what CSM gives to our students, their families, and to the well-being of our community cannot be overstated. So I would like to have you help me welcome one of our alumna, John Yatrakis, who graduated from our nursing program in 1996 and who now serves as the Vice President and Chief Nursing Officer for MedStar St. Mary's. She is a homegrown success story of our programming, demonstrating how CSM prepares our students to excel and achieve well beyond their expectations. Please help me invite Dawn Yatrakis to the podium. Thank you. Um, just. Um, I want to thank everyone for allowing me the opportunity um, to come and say a few words uh, this morning uh, for this most important mission. Um, this holds a very personal significance for me. Um, I started my educational journey here at CSM in 1992. Um, at the time, my husband and I were very young parents, um, barely making ends meet. Um, I couldn't afford daycare, so I worked in the evening. Um, I was doing bookkeeping for a local hotel. Um, I suddenly realized that this really wasn't going to get, where, get me where I wanted for my family. So I started exploring my options in the workforce and, and realized I really needed to pursue a higher education. With my limited means, I wondered how was I going to accomplish this? Um, so I started to explore and I found CSM. Um, and so, of course, I looked at the program offerings, um, and right away, A, what struck me? Accounting. I was doing bookkeeping, and I was really good at it. Um, so I started at CSM in an accounting program. Um, it wasn't until my second semester of registration when I realized this little thing they had called the nursing program, the associate degree in nursing program. Um, so for me, uh, this was a life-changing moment. Um, I had always admired nurses um, throughout my childhood. I had had multiple hospitalizations and surgeries. Um, nurses impacted me in ways that I, I cherished. Um, I recognized, um, too, as an adult, um, giving birth to my son and having that same um, feeling about the nurses that um, surrounded me. I was inspired. Um, I, I um, had never considered that this was open to me. I never considered myself college material. Um, so I thought long and hard. I looked at the curriculum. I um, decided to do what it took to commit to it. I changed my major, and I've never looked back. Um, my experience here at CSM shaped not only who I am as a professional, but who I am as a person. The foundation I received on the technical side of nursing gave me the ability to enter the workforce not only providing competent care, but doing so in a way that provided the efficiency needed to be a valued member of the healthcare team rather quickly. The foundation I received on the emotional side of nursing, the heart of nursing, if you will, was the consistent approach taken here with the instruction 
to include the patient and keep the patient central to everything we do. This, um, this importance of caring, empathy, advocacy was stressed and role modeled at every turn. I learned that the way to achieve the best possible outcomes was to make a connection with your patients using these values. My time in the classroom, in the lab, and at the clinical sites here was successful in preparing me for this entry into practice because I was surrounded by faculty who cared for me, they cared about my success, they were engaged in my journey, and most of all, at the end of the day, they were committed to producing the best nurses for our community. Special thanks I want to give to um, Robin Young and Annette Ragland, um, two faculty members I see here. Um, I, you, um, have, you have impacted me. You have impacted me greatly. I think about you often. Um, I just want you, you to know that I'm thankful I have the opportunity to say that um, today, um, very much so. Um, again, I was inspired by a group of nurses um, I think my story parallels many others currently on the same path and highlights the reason that we're here today. CSM enables individuals who have the passion and will but perhaps have unique challenges and obstacles, the opportunity to reach their highest potential. My educational journey continued after my excellent foundation and I went on to achieve my BSN in nursing and then a master's degree in nursing leadership. The progression through my educational journey led to my, my current role today as chief nurse at MedStar St. Mary's Hospital. In this role, I've again validated the contribution that CSM makes to our patients and community with each nursing program graduating class. These nurses and allied health students come out as I did, technically prepared to handle the most extremely challenging acute care environment and emotionally prepared to put the patient first. They are passionate, dedicated, and inspired. When I look across at my team, both nursing and allied health individuals at MedStar St. Mary's, I see many nurses in leadership in, at, at the bedside who start the, started their career here, who had their foundation here. These nurses are achieving record success with nurse sensitivity, quality, and safety outcomes. Um, they are consistently leaders in the state as well as the nation in areas such as fall prevention, infection prevention, patient satisfaction. I'm proud to see this program still committed to producing excellence. These nurses gain their foundation here. They value our commitment, the value to our communities is immeasurable, and much of the credit is to our partners here at CSM. I am proud to be a product of this institution and so very grateful to their obvious dedication, commitment to serving our community and enhancing the healthcare future for us all. That was humbling, it really is. I'd like to just Thank, thanks again, everyone who joined us this morning. Um, in particular, our distinguished retired professor after serving us for 51 years, Dr. Richard Siciliano is with us. I was just gobsmacked when he walked in. <laughs> it, it, it shows something about the kinds of roots we have here. People just fail retirement and keep coming back. <laughs> including Dr. Patterson. <laughs> um, I, I think it's, you know, once you've got CSM in your blood, you just never leave. It, it, it's true. And, and this ends our remarks. And now it's time for the official groundbreaking. So I'd like to invite all of you who can, um, program speakers, trustees, elected officials, foundation directors, and guests, to join us in a brief walk to the end of the pavement for some lifting of some shovels and some wearing of some hard hats, and we all know what those pictures look like. Um, it's about a tenth of a mile walk. Uh, it, we do have a van if you want to be in the picture and you're uncomfortable with the walk. And Val Nice will be there and she will direct us forcefully into standing in those positions so that we have the ideal picture. Once again, I just have to thank all of you for being here. This is a phenomenal milestone in the event, in the trajectory of CSM history and you're all part of it thank you thank you, thank you.